Michael Allen wrote in, said, hey, CCD. Sorry, Dustin, you don't get the jump rank in the initial order. That's fair. How do you determine when to discuss or cover something from an objective versus subjective lens? Colin, I remember you talking about writing video game reviews in light of the Philip Muse and IGN news, and I'm paraphrasing, but you said something along the line of you play a game and write down how it made you feel. How does this apply to covering the most recent PlayStation showcase or news in general? In last week's episode, you alluded to the showcase being rated a D for the things you cared about, but sounded like you were trying to cover it objectively. Quite frankly, I'm not here most of the time for your objective view. I am here to listen to how it made you feel. I'm curious how you what you guys think about this, because from my point of view, Michael, and I think most of the audience would agree, I try to weave in and out of those two things. Yeah. And I try to be clear when I'm being one or when I'm being the other, but it's by implication usually, right? Like, right. for instance, a game, it's an objective fact that Spider-Man 2 is coming out this fall. The nature of the announcement of Spider-Man 2 and their recalcitrance and announcing a date is subjective because some people might be bothered by that and some people might not be. I think sometimes you have to just read into what I'm saying, but I don't think I want you guys to be careful about this idea that you only want a subjective Colin. I do not think that that is true. I think you are mostly getting a subjective Colin, but if it was Colin covering PlayStation the way he thought it was supposed to be covered only or the games that he cared about, this would be a very different show. Half the things we talk about on the show every week, I don't give a flying fuck about. And that yeah. is me being objective by being like someone cares about it. It's what we were just saying about PS Plus and NBA 2K23. I wouldn't be surprised if that was literally one of the most downloaded PS Plus games ever. But we went we went over that that in 90 seconds. And so there is a balance of objectivity and subjectivity. But when you're looking at something like a showcase, I think you can cover it from both angles. And I tried to do that. I would have loved first party games. I would have loved all single player games. Anything else would have been a waste of time for me from an objective point from a subjective point of view. I don't give a fuck about any of that shit. There was almost nothing at that showcase for me, but it's not about me. That's yeah. the point. I guess I was trying to get the top. It's not about me. Well, the, uh, yeah. uh, something I, I would want to add on to that is that is that you're f you're feeling that like that is also a feeling like when I when, I don't think of me weaving in and out of objectivity and subjectivity. I think I think of the entire thing as subjective. I just think I'm su my subjective view is pretty balanced mm. where like i do feel like that game showcase was kind of like you know meh I, I, I felt like it was like a c but i also feel like as a game i also feel subjectively that as a game showcase for a broader audience it's pretty decent i also feel that the you know reliance on cg was pretty lame i also feel like you know I, there's a million things you feel right and you voice those things. It's, it's not possible. You can be as close to obje objective as possible, but it's still not true objectivity. Like, no one's truly objective about anything. Uh, and I, I don't think there's really necessarily a contradiction between saying like, hey, yeah, for me personally, it's a D, but it's, you know, probably a B plus for everybody else. I think that's all still a feeling. Yeah, that's fair. You that's know, a very good point. Yeah. What do you think, Dustin? People get annoyed. I saw this recently on one of our social platforms that uh, someone was pointing out how I say for me, blah, 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 blah. I do that really intentionally because in online spaces like this, oftentimes if you don't state that what you're about to say is uh, not not objective, but a, a personal feeling, people will take it as you're trying to put your your feelings as fact when with what Chris was so saying, stupid. it's always going to be based on how you feel about things. So I try to make it clear. So I'm not just trying to say that what I think is true for everyone all the time. So, yes, that's why I always say for me. I Sacred hate that, symbols. Though. I, I hate that. Uh, not that you do it. I hate yeah. that you feel compelled to do that. Yeah, because, totally. Like, I get that. Because it's so imp it's so obviously implicit in having a conversation. Exactly. That it is your opinion. Yes. Like you don't have to start every like this is my opinion. Like I get sometimes it's necessary for like very nuanced discussions. I get it, but like I don't know. It bothers me that that's a compulsion that we have or that we have to have to avoid people just reading into things in the completely wrong way. Like it's it's so stupid, right? Well, well, going back to the example of the NBA game, I would say. This is going to be great for all the PlayStation gamers out there since there's a lot of them like NBA. I don't care about it. So you're right in that saying I don't care. It should be the assumption when you say I you're talking from a personal perspective and you don't necessarily demand that everyone shares the same viewpoint as you. Yeah. But this is the Internet. 
Dude, in you, you modern to, times. You deal with the lowest common denominator a lot. I totally get that. That's why I've tried to remove myself from just even dealing and even reacting to one off attacks and things like that. It's like you can't really win this game of whack-a-mole. And you have to realize and I mean this with all due respect that a lot of people are just are just a lot of naysayers, a lot of people that demean or go into the like the average American reads in an eighth grade reading level. Do you know that the average American? I believe it. So like you're not dealing all the time with the mega deepest thinker when you're dealing with the lowest common denominator on the internet. You understand what I'm saying? So like I've tried to live that advice by just not giving it too much. Like you'd have to be an absolute moron to not know that when someone's speaking, they're doing it from their perspective, but that it needs to be iterated is one thing. And then as Chris is saying that you even have to say it, that's a whole different thing. And so the easiest thing is to just not, is to just not bother at all. I think the weaving of objectivity and subjectivity is so interesting because it is usually seamless by perspective and you usually don't have to explicitly say so. But I just want to reiterate to people that I don't think you want subjective Colin at, at all times. You need objective Colin to run the show. You need objective Colin to decide what is news because if you want subjective Colin, then Colin's making a show for Colin. Right, and that's yeah. not sacred symbols. Like Sacred Symbols is co- like a show Colin loves and does, but it's not like a show catered to Colin. And um, call think need- Colin's Corner. Call Colin's Corner, right? Exactly. Oh. That would be a sing- that would be like my, my my Twitch stream or something like that. So I I totally get what you're saying, but I think I think balancing it with, let's say subjectivity is like what you like plus like your fandom. People call me a fanboy sometimes. I don't agree with that terminology, but I'm a fan of PlayStation, and sometimes your fandom, like my fandom of the Jets or the Islanders requires objectivity. Sometimes that fandom gets sucked into subjectivity. So as an example, objectively, the Jets look really great on paper this year. Subjectively, I've been a Jets fan for too long to believe too much in what's actually going to happen. And you expect things to fall apart and you wait things to play out. That balance of two things is what makes the Jet fan the Jet fan. Very similar to video games. Very similar to all these other things where you have to take in all of the different nuance. It's important. Um, That's why I think that it's okay to grade the showcase from the perspective of both what I think would be a more objective viewer and what I think would be a Colin or a more subjective viewer. And by the way, um, you see this, I, I read it on ILP. I didn't use it here, but someone wrote into us saying my, his viewpoint was basically, you know, I'm paraphrasing, but his viewpoint was basically changed about the nature of the showcase when his friend, his kind of rando friend got involved. And he's like, did you see this new final fantasy game? I mean, that's, that's the real world. And it's what I remember when God of War Ragnarok came out and I said, I really like it. I think it's great, but I don't like it as much as a lot of people do. But that if it was the first imagine you play you, you're 40 years old, you grew up on Mario and Super Mario World and all that. And then you just didn't play games and didn't really had no familiarity. And then someone set you in front of God of War Ragnarok it would be the most amazing thing you ever saw in your life. Right. Because he has no he yeah. has no there's no bearing. Yeah, it's all it's perspective. Exactly. So I think that that is the, the nexus of objectivity and subjectivity. And I think it's a deep question, Michael, but I personally think I do a pretty good job of it, but you guys can keep the feedback coming. 